You're listening to the Loudmouth Radio Network. No matter the time or the season, we're open and available 24-7. Shouldn't your dealership be too? Carumba.com, the convenient online used vehicle marketplace. Register your independent dealership now. Throughout our lives, we're going to always have obstacles, things that are going to come upon us that will challenge us. And what we're quick to learn, or maybe gradually will learn, is that you can overcome them. It's really about facing them and fighting through them. And that is not anything at all oblivious to anybody that is walking this earth. At some point in our lives, if you are doing anything, um, whether it's job related, something in your life, you're going to have some challenges. The question is, how do you face those challenges and see them through? So today, guys, you ready? We're having a Sunday's Money Motivation. Let's talk about working through challenges. Let's go. You're listening to Sonny's Monday Motivation here on LoudmouthRadio.com. Guys, I'm ready to have a really good conversation because you already know most of these topics, okay, the majority, okay, all of them, uh, <laughs> is, is, is something that I can attest to. It's something that may be in my current, may have been in my past. Uh, could very well be something that I will have to uh, reconnect to in the future. But at the end of the day, I, I'm always really coming to you from a place of understanding and uh, in a magnitude in which I know that I've had to either conquer or uh, address some things. It's, it's something, right? Because really, a lot of times, the things that we talk about is coming from our our own natural element of, of uh, experience. So I know that there's not anybody at all that's going to hear this broadcast, whether it's today, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, years from now, decades from now, that's going to relate working through challenges. Because it's something that as a human being, you're going to be charged with. You're going to have to figure out what and how do I maneuver in this space uh, called life and have the ability to overcome objectives or things that are um, that are going to come and in, in touch your doorstep at some point in your life. So the thing is, you're like, well, Sonny, OK, you, you, you're touching on a, a topic that is real. And, you know, what what does that look like for you? Well, I'm going to tell you this. Any and everything that you might be uh, dealing with at some point in time may have different aspects of how you approach them. It may be a, a, a different way that you'll uh, have to um, step up to them. It may be a, a different way to react. And I'm going to tell you, the, the best thing is as your emotional scale is maturing and developing, because I, I've had this thing that I've called some time now. Uh, I think it's the best phrase to uh, to 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 clone it as a, a, a adversary muscle. You're gonna grant. You're gonna gain an adversary muscle, okay. But how will your muscle look? Depends on how much adversity you face, right? Um, how many things are you gonna do in your life that will create or pose challenges? And I'm gonna tell you. Sometimes we have things that we have no absolute control over. We know that that is going to be a circumstance. But also, let's be real. There are some challenges that we face that could be self-inflicted or self-created or a rea- uh, you know a result of something that we've done or th- that we're involved in, and then a challenge comes along, right? The thing is, you know, taking the time and processing, you know, what you're dealing with, and how do you um, how do you shape it, you know? So let's just let's just take, for example, let's say that you have um, a driver's test. You're you're taking driver's ed or you have uh, a a driver's license test that you have to take a road test or even the written test. 
and you might be licensed. You may have never been licensed before. So at some point, um, and this is for all my drivers, there are some people who may never, ever drive. So you may not relate to this statement to the same degree, but all of us at some point, most likely in your teenage years, during your school years, uh, you were automatically provisioned to take driver's education. I know things have changed traumatically since I was in school, but uh, some curriculums in most states require driver's education to be a part of the curriculum. Typically, you might encounter driver's ed by your sophomore going into your junior year, somewhere in there. Some states are driven by the age factor of, of, of the potential driver. So if you're at the age of 15, sometimes the age of 16, they may allow you to go through the process of getting your permit, right? So then too, you might also have some curriculums. Now I'm from Chicago. So driver's education was a curriculum that we had in school. And I want to say that we actually had driver's ed in our sophomore year. So now I will tell you this, some students will elect to not go through it and really see it through because they might have total fear. They don't they disregard it. They don't have the intention. Uh, they don't want to deal with it. it. It's a number of reasons. Right. Excuse me, coffee break. So if you are, uh, you know, student age. And you're in school. This is something that you're going to go in a classroom. You're going to get the rules of the road. You're going to probably get a book, pamphlet, manual, or something like that, that has the state laws. And in that packet, you'll see all the information that you need to basically have the substance, that, as they say, to know how to conduct yourself as a driver. Right. Then you actually have the physical driver's test in the road, in the car with an instructor, you know, examining you, watching everything that you're doing, grading you and critiquing how you're going about driving. So you, you can see measurably why that would be a challenge to somebody who's never, ever driven a car. You've never, ever uh, have been taught what the signs mean, certain rules of the road, how to conduct yourself, safety measures. These are all the things that are deemed necessary in order for you to safely accomplish getting your driver's license. So. How do you go about that? You know, you, you definitely know that if you're on the road with an instructor, you're going to he's going to want both your hands or she will want you to have both your hands on the steering wheel. They're going to make sure that you're and now we're in a technology driven age. So all my young people now, if you listen to this, uh, you know, you're not holding your cell phone and it's not I'm not excluding adults, including myself. I'm talking to myself at the same time. You're not supposed to hold your phone. You're not supposed to be texting. You're not supposed to be putting on your makeup. You're not supposed to be fixing your hair, you know, all of these things that can distract you. Right. So that could pose a challenge if you do that. I can guarantee you he's going to fail you. Right. What about the written test? There are tons of people who, who may not necessarily do so well on testing. You might fail the test. Does that mean because you failed the test, you don't go back and go and, and go back through it? No, you, you have to then examine what you, you know, the, the test itself and what all parts of it that you, you don't become familiar with and where your weak points are and maybe where your stronger points are. So my, 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 my point of saying this is that universally, um, driver's ed, driver's test, driver's license processes across the board pretty much kind of look the same. They mirror the same aspect. But does that mean that each and every person that takes this class, that takes the written, that's with an instructor, are they all going to drive the same? Are they all going to test the same? Are they going to answer the questions the same? Are they going to approach the rules of the road the same? No, they're not. Right. So naturally, we do what is um what we're able to do from our own lens of understanding. So with that being said, you know, you're going to learn over time how to approach overcoming different things. And in that process, you'll start to learn a lot more about yourself. Right. And, you know, I can tell you uh, a lot of times some challenges feels like a fire, you know, Fires can be intimidating. They can be unpredictable. They're definitely a feeling of danger. Um, it gives you a sense that there's a sense of urgency to, to act, you know. And definitely, you know, if I told you, okay, Sonny, uh, you know, if, if Sonny's telling you, look, uh, Sally, I need you to go in that, that building and get the computer off the desk that I left upstairs on the second floor where the fire is, because all of this critical information is in there, 
Uh, you may do one or two things. You either may look at me crazy and just refuse to do it, or then you may look at me and say, I'm, I'm willing to take the chance and I'm going to go to do it. And I'm not telling you to go do that, but just, just stay with me. But my point is, is that your approach or the consensus of how you might think and how you try to evaluate or, um, you know, consider things. So your adversity muscle is developing over time. You know, if you're, if you're a person that's, that plays things safe, you don't do a lot of things, you're not involved in a lot of stuff, you're not necessarily taking on a, anything that may be more outside of your comfort zone, then you might not be, as, as, you know, your adversity muscle may not be as, 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 as prominent as the next person because you really haven't challenged yourself enough or had enough experiences of things to really test to see where your the elastic the elasticity of your body uh, can react to. And what I mean by that is how far you can stretch, you, you know, how far can you snap back in position uh, if there's something that is giving you a challenge. Right. And I think that two things will uh, always happen. Either you're going to do it or you won't. Right. And in doing it, it, it may come in different ways. And each time does not necessarily facilitate, facilitate the same type of action. But it definitely, um, one, is something that is going to uh, leave you with an impactful thought. And it's going to make you think, have to think through the process. What, what do I do? How do I, how do I approach this? What, what, what assistance or, or what things do I need to reach out for that can help get me through this thing? So I, I want to say to you that... Um, I'm very, uh, I'm very much at a point in my life where I'm working not to be as reactive to things. Right. And, you know, we're in a society right now, man, that is so many things happening at any given time. It is very natural for a person to feel or start to develop a reactive aspect of, 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 of action towards things. Meaning that, you know, if somebody is, let's say, swinging a bat and you're within arm's length of that person swinging a bat. And if you're lucky, you'll see them raising their arm. You might see the bat in their hand and you'll, you you kind of brace yourself. So you kind of step back or you'll duck or you'll move out of the way because of course you don't want to take the impact of the swing. Right. So, you, you know, you become more aware, you become more conscious Right. And not to say that the person's trying to hit you, but it could just be a situation that something is happening in the area in which you're standing or something where your, you know, your, your presence is and something like that is happening. So you react to it. You know, that's a natural thing to do. You'll be surprised how, you know, that type of reaction and muscle that 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 muscle sensory of of response can go through your can come through your body in a emotional way. Right. Not just in a physical way. Trust me, I'm telling you from guys from experience. And, uh, you know, if you've ever had, you know, uh, some serious amount of obstacles or things that have happened in your life um, over time, you, you, you start to develop certain characteristics. You start to develop certain mindsets. You start to, um, you know, even your conversation uh, towards things can be affected. And all of it is going to be a direct result of how you process things to work through those challenges. And I'm not saying there's a right or wrong way, right? I'm not giving you a lecture about, you know, that, man, Don, you're not responding to this right. You know, you're going to be fired today or you're feeling in life because you're not responding to the things happening in your life in the right way. No, we're all here guiding through our own evolution, each and every one of us. This is why sometimes it's mission critical that as you're doing things in life and you're, you're stepping through things in life, that you don't necessarily make decisions based upon the next person's life or the way that they do things. Because maybe what they're doing and how they're responding does not fit in the mode of what you need to do. Matter of fact, it's just as important that you learn in your own processes how to do things because you're the one walking around with your brain, your body, your mind, your mouth, your hands, your feet. You know, that's why we all are individuals having this human experience. And so the better you're able to within this shell of a frame of this physical person, flesh and bones, can get to a point of building that adversity muscle or developing, you know, traits that help you 
process things better, you know, and not necessarily jump out or, you know, like I say, run in the fire. I don't I don't want you running in the fire. I, I do want you to maybe have to face and make a situational decision. But I'm not I'm not saying just run head on straight forward and, and just hope for the best. That's never going to give you. Uh, the value system in which you need to be building thing, you know, building building characteristics for, you know, another thing I, I, I also recognize that the way we communicate or the lack of also can further determine how our challenges grow and, 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 and how they may either stay, uh, you know, within one direction or may spread across, you know, um, for me, I have literally uh, just currently uh, prime example. Uh, I had a, a, a challenge of some some sorts um, that, and I'm gonna say this: it wasn't one thing. It was just a couple of things I needed to do or work through. And you know, for me, um, I you know I think that when you actively are uh, working towards you know your own self development. In your own personal development, you start to have a different lens, um, your your viewpoint of of how things come at you or how you how you uh, compute the information that you you may have. I, I feel like there's this uh, this uh, metamorphosis metamorphosis that happens that gives you a a, a different aspect of uh, reproach and. You might have these small steps <laughs> that you that you that you take that you go across, or you could come out with a response that could definitely be, um, you know, high energy. You know, what does that look like? And and everything doesn't require the same thing. You know, we talked about that in the beginning of the statement of the conversation. But I I, I say that um, it's so important that you just kind of really pay attention to some of the things that you're going through. I I've heard this this saying many many times that uh you'll keep you'll keep enduring the you'll keep enduring the um the experience until you learn from it, you know. And in every bit of the sense it is true. And that pretty much things that we're dealing with are less they're life lessons. And um, and I'm not saying that, you know, somebody's out here just wanting to see you fail. And, and th- but you know what? Failing is a natural process in life. And if you know, like me, uh, failing, the more comfortable you can become with the idea that maybe everything you do would not necessarily come out to the other side. But that doesn't mean that you don't approach it with the full extent of wanting to see it succeed. Of course, you know, if you have something that you're putting your time and commitment to, you want to see the better of it come out of it, you know. Um, but it does not necessarily mean that it's, ungo- it's going to unfold in that capacity, in that experience each and every time it won't. You know, one of the things that I've gotten to... Um, that, that this point that I've gotten to in a lot of ways is um, processing things. And, you know, sometimes you have to um, take note and, and not necessarily uh, respond right then and there. Sometimes you have to let it simmer, you know, and in that simmering process, you know, kind of think through, like, if I, if I make this kind of decision, what potentially could be the outcome of it? So uh, ironically enough, I have, um, I remember when I was actually in in college doing my uh, MBA, and my marketing uh, marketing was my was my concentration at the time. My marketing and business international business concentration, and um, I remember taking this elective, this course. I wanted to, to you know, I was knocking down my classes, and it was a class that I I needed that was a requirement that wasn't available at that time. So I ended up taking an elective just to fulfill one of my elective uh, requirements. And I just so happened to take this class that was a project management class, right? And that project management class turned out to be such a turning point. It literally uh, was such a dynamic um, experience. And and I'm going to give credit to my instructor, Vanessa Elkins Rogers, who uh, to this day has become such an influential person to me. And she was my instructor, along with many of the other students in this class. And she was such a pivot that from that elective, 
the very next session, majority of the of my classmates, which was probably about 20, 25 of us, was immediately like, okay, um, Vanessa, are you going to do another course right behind this? And you know, the, 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 the curriculum of course is set based upon, you know, participation and, 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 and enrollment. So when I tell you the majority of those students that was on the track with me all fell behind suit. So I went from that one class to the next project management class to the next class. And then I looked up and I realized, um, I think it was maybe six, seven classes, um, additional within the curriculum. And guys, I literally um, switched my major and, um, and and went for the master's in project management. So I, I, the NPM. And I, I remember the very moment of, you know, that first class with her and she started talking about things. And as we started diving into the subject matter and the curriculum, it immediately a light bulb came on. And I was like, man, everything in our life is a project. Everything that we're approaching is a project. And uh, one of the, you know, of course, there are people who uh, actually get project management certificates. There are people that uh, actually may go the route that I took, which was actually the full degree in concentration. And, you know, you'll learn that, um, which pretty much you're learning from a business perspective, uh, you know, how to approach um, handling of projects, you know, whether it's budgets or uh, subjective matters of things that have to be developed. And, you know, um, primarily from a business perspective, you know, it's always going to be about a budget and, and whether or not, you know, if money is allocated into this project, you know, the, the level of success that is set in, you know, that's set in the beginning and the expectations of what that project should look like and how things should can be conveyed. So naturally, a lot of times as a project manager, you're working through uh, the processes of things that would take what, what that project would take, the resources, the people that need to be involved, the budget that needs to be spent. And you basically are creating these timelines or, 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 you know, these subjective project lines to anticipate, you know, how this project would go. And then maybe what will happen that would or will not allow this project to be successful. And as a project manager, you have to be one of the main main components to recognize whether or not, you know, this business or this this client or something like that should continue to keep investing in this project and, and see it through. And then there's other times when you may find that you have to put more resources to it because you're going to fall short. Or you may find that you're going to be over budget or you may find that you're not going to uh, finish in the amount of time that you uh, initially elected for this project. It may be a shorter time window, it may be a larger time window. But overall, guys, what's happening is that you're making these decisions. You know, a lot of it is based upon the information that you're taking from different sources and creating this picture or this determination you know, the truth of the matter, whether you're a project manager or teacher, anything, you can only speculate to a certain degree. You know, I know that we're in a, a cycle of artificial intelligence and you have, you know, technology that we have now. Um, I don't know if we want to say partner with or being controlled by it, but you, hey, I'll let you make the decision. Uh, but, you know, for me, recognizing that, you know, we are in a in a world of of constant change. And we're, you know, we're in a, you know, for us in the U.S., we're in a capitalist type of environment. So there's a lot of things that um, is de- decisions are made primarily a lot of times based upon financial uh, response or financial responsibility, things of that nature. So when you're dealing with these kind of things, you have to address them. And so long story short, I, I, I eventually continued on to that course, that coursework and w- went through that coursework and uh, received my master's in project management. And, and then I ended up going back to the MBA and finishing my marketing master's degree as well. Um, and, 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 and just for me, um, I was raised to really work to finish things and to, and to get to a point of completion. And I think that that's one of the biggest things that when it comes to challenges and things that we face with, you know, a lot of times some people leave things open ended, don't finish it. They leave it hanging, you know, and um, but but hear this. There are sometimes there are times when you do realize that maybe this is not going to be good for me to continue doing it. You know, whether it's uh, work, if it's a job, if it's a project, if it's a, um, you know, something you're dealing with with your family, maybe with your spouse. It could be things that naturally are um, going on in your life that you have to make a decision on. 
right? So it, it is not necessarily a loss to stop something. Sometimes that is the best decision for the, the whole situation. But the evaluation and determining what, you know, how the outcome of that decision is made will impact you. So it's still no matter what you do, you're still having to work through a challenge and figure out whether or not, uh, you know, this thing in front of you still deserves the attention that you're giving it. And that can come in the form of a person that can come in the form of a a thing. It can come in form of a um you know, situations, there's a ton of, of reasons um, to have to work through things. Right. And so, guys, I just uh, I felt compelled to, uh, you know, start start this this week off with, you know, that that conversation. I know we're at the end of January and, um, you know, when it's, we're still in the top of the year. And for many people, you know, in your in your job and you know, you're listening to the Loud life, Radio you may, Network. You know, be having something that you're coming to closing out and you're going to the next thing, right? Just having uh, rent, living, mortgage. You know, if you're living somewhere, you know, and, and, and you're not necessarily in full ownership of where you reside, most likely you're paying rent or you're paying a mortgage. So every month that thing cycles around and comes back. Don't tell me you don't see challenges and points of times when it comes to that. Let's just go there, Right. So, you know, how, how do I do, how do I deal with uh, January, closing out January and, and, and just within a few days, we'll be in February. All right. So you may be challenged on, you know, handling rent or handling mortgage or handling, uh, you know, business expenses or something to that degree. And so I just want to encourage you uh, that whatever it is, just keep reaching higher, slow down, take a breath and um, and know that you're capable and you're able to work through whatever it is. Um, that's the wonderful thing is that, you know, we've been given the choice. Uh, you know, we've been given a, the opportunity to make choices. And that's what life is about choices and, and, and how we navigate them. Right. And I think for uh, the more majority of us, as we're maturing through our lives and going through different phases in our lives, some things that may have been of one value system to us or another, those things start to change. And that's okay too. And, you know, as you're processing, you know, those aspects and those, those, those walks through your life, know that you're capable, know that you're able and, um, you know, be encouraged and know that you can, you can actually, uh, make good decisions for yourself that can get you to a better situation, even if you've been challenged in the way of just on your decision making. And maybe some of the decisions you used to make has cost you to have hardships or some type of setbacks or some type of burden. Um, and, and guys, if I'm not talking something that you can relate to, hey, I get it. Just keep it moving. Don't, no, hey, no hard feelings, right? But if you have had this life experience, can I tell you that, you know, I, I, I know that one thing is for sure. You live long enough, you do more than enough, or, or, or you, you set out to do some things, you're going to um, learn very quickly of, about the things that I've just mentioned on this broadcast, uh, what that looks like and what that feels like. And in that space and in that sense, sometimes it can feel so much bigger than you. Sometimes it really is. And, you know, without going too deep into so many different directions, I just want you to know that you are capable and able to get through them. Right. So, guys, I just want to uh, say thank you. We've had a a full month of Mondays of this and it's been uh, an incredible start. And I am so grateful that we are tuned in and tapped on and getting ready for the work week. Because you already know, most of us either got up and struggled out of bed, fell out of bed, ran out of bed, <laughs> overslept, got up early, whatever whatever your impact of your day started out as. I hope that it continues to be uh, one of prosperity, one of stresslessness, and uh, definitely um, one that you, whatever it is that you're aiming for to happen for you today, uh, that it works its way for you and in favor for you. And uh, like always, guys, I appreciate your time and your attention. And um, as as always, guys, let's let's get it and uh, let's let's stay in touch with everybody's uh, mission in life, which is to uh, be present and 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 to be able to contribute to what 
we have as a dynamic force as a, as a human race. I know that uh, these past few weeks, there's been some some heavy things that have been in the media, uh, just to switch pace for a second. Um, the, um, you know, the, the, the world of, of, of uh, change and challenges, uh, like I said, are always upon us. And I want to encourage you to um, do whatever is necessary to protect your space, whether it's your your mental space, your emotional space, because, um, you know, we've had some mass shootings. Uh, we've had some uh, some some subjective matters of things that have happened with uh, police brutality. You know, we've had another um, big media uh highlight on another young man whose life has been taken at the hands of the police, Mr. Tyree Nichols. Um, you know, so there's things that are constantly around us that are, you know, triggering, that can be very triggering. And you'll be surprised how just those different things can roll over to other things and, 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 and impact you. So, um, you know, once again, work through what's best for you. You know, if that means not listening to the news constantly and hearing all the, 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 the damage of things of that nature that is coming from those constructs, then I tell you not to listen. You know, if if, if seeing videos of of police brutality is going to affect you in a way in which um, you know it to, and sometimes you're not even aware how it can impact you, then make a decision that's best for yourself. But at the end of the day, guys, I think as a human race, we have a responsibility to treat each other um, better. We just got to do better. We have to do better. And, um, you know, I've, I actually had a friend, uh, a childhood friend of mine of over 30 years um, was shot and, and, and killed by her by a domestic violence situation. And the person, the, the gentleman, I don't know who he is, also turned a gun on himself and killed himself in the process. So when I say guys, I understand, you know, the heaviness of what is also happening in the world, even outside of our own circumstances, those things impact us too. And how we work through that as a whole. And, and to me, yes, it is definitely a challenge. I may not have been the one on the other side of the trigger. I may have not been the one that, that, that pulled the trigger. I may not have been the one that was beat or the one that was doing the hitting, but it does, it does impact you. It does, um, and and it should, you know, you never want to see another person suffer. You 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 don't want to see people cause harm. And I know for me, I don't thrive on on causing harm. I don't thrive on having harm done to me. So, guys, I just want us to be better humans. And I think that um, each each week that I put this stuff together and I talk through it and I produce it and I do all of the things necessary to get it complete to, to share with you guys. I'm always thinking about what can I give to empower you today? What can I give that will give you inspiration to keep going? What can I give you that will be influential? And, um, you know, it, it does come in a form in which it's, it's a level of entertainment from a, a radio perspective, you know, from an audio perspective. So I hope that at the end of the day, um, you're getting something from it. And that it is giving you some tools or resources that makes a little bit, you know, make your life a little bit easier for the week ahead and um, or for the moment that you're listening in. Right. So I, I, I thank you guys for taking the time to hear me today. And I, I want to challenge you to 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 be the best human you can be today and, uh, you know, let your light shine and, 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 and that your energy may be able uh, to be a blessing to the next person that is in the circumference of your space or who's on the other side of your voice. All right? You guys be blessed. This episode is sponsored by Loudmouth.com, the number one small business online network. We're putting the word out about small business. Put your business on the referral network online that wants to put the word out about you. Thirty point seven million small businesses in the U.S. creating one point five million jobs annually. Small business accounts for sixty four percent of new job creation in the U.S. There's strength in numbers. No matter what we face, know that there's strength in us. Because of you, we're able. We're capable. We're resilient. And we are available because we are small business. And together, 
We're the economy. Thank you.